Hello and greetings to Coach Ariel and Coach Pricey. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share um, a kingdom word. I'm so grateful for your ministry and um, I, I actually just believe God's going to continue to just um, multiply and um, bless you abundantly because it's doing so much in impacting the kingdom and letting people know about the kingdom message. So. Um, today, I would like to talk to you about something that, uh, as of late, it seems like it's really uh, an issue that's a problem in society, and that is standing on kingdom truth. Um, I think one of the things that we are seeing um, in every area, every area of influence, every mountain, we are seeing where falsehood is coming into the different areas and even in religion um, we're seeing a whole lot that is not biblically based and not something that can stand because only God's word can stand so I'm here as a reminder I want to encourage people to continue to stand on kingdom truth so this is what we're going to talk about today I'm going to pray real quick and then we'll get started Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity. We ask that you would just speak through my mind and my mouth, give me clarity of speech, and help me to hear what it is you have to say to your people through your word. We thank you so much for the opportunity. We ask that you would be glorified in Jesus' name, amen. All right, the first thing that I would like to um, remind everyone is that God's character is one of truth and stability. And I know in um, today's world and just the things that we're seeing, things are just so unstable. You just don't know how things are gonna go from day to day um, based on things taking place in government, things taking place in religions, things taking place in um, education, every area things are changing and they're not changing based on truth. So we have to remember what God's character is like and continue to stand on that because um, outside of his character and the truth that his word stands for, we don't have anything to stand on. If we base things on um, the changing tides of society and, and what society thinks is important, it um, just isn't something that we want to do. We don't want to base how we live and base um, everything about our lives on things that will eventually fail because they're based on lies. So um, let's look at Psalms chapter 102 and verse 27. And I'll be reading from several translations of the Bible. This is the Berean Standard Bible. It says, but you remain the same and your years will never end. And um, in Malachi chapter three, verse six, um, part A, this is the New Living Translation. It says, I am the Lord and I do not change. So much for the things in society where people are trying to um, base things that they say that they believe on um, changing doctrine. Doctrine does not change if it's based on the Word of God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, in the Berean Standard Bible says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So, Another thing that we need to be reminded of is that God's word cannot be broken. Um, there's so many different things that I've heard as of late uh, where people are trying to cause doctrine to line up with what's taking place in society and in the culture. And, and we can't change what God's word says to uh, pacify the culture and to pacify people in society. His word isn't changing. His word cannot be broken. John chapter 10 and verse 35 in the Amplified, it said, If he called them gods, men to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be undone or annulled or broken. 
It cannot be changed. It's not going to change based on um, what we're currently dealing with, the ideologies that people come up with. God's word is not going to change based on that. It is the same today, was the same yesterday, it will be the same forever. So um, that's something that we could stand on. That's why it's so important to stand on his word and not be moved by what's taking place in the world. Um, another thing that we can stand on in regards to the truth of God's word is that God's word is time tested. In Proverbs chapter 30 in verse 5, in the New Living Translation, it says, Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to all who come to him for protection. So every word of God proves true. All the things I mean, if you think about what we're looking at right now in the world, all these things have been predicted from the beginning of time in his word. His word has told us what these days would be like and described it perfectly. And we are seeing those things come to pass. So his word always proves to be true. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 19, the New Living Translation, it says, truthful words stand the test of time but lies are soon exposed and we are definitely seeing that today um, every day in the news you find out things where people have been lying and <laughs> there's so many things going on in the world where people are being found out as liars so um, like i said god's word is the only thing that we could truly stand on we cannot put our trust in man. We have to keep our trust in God. Okay, the truth does not change, but people do. I think it's so important for people to recognize that. It is important to um, realize that God does not change. He stays the same. And there are things that come along in life sometimes where um, there may be someone who you've put your trust in or someone you, you felt like um, was reliable, but there's a, always an opportunity where that may change. And so it's important that we not put our trust so much in arms of flesh, but that we keep our trust in what God has said, not based on people, because people do change. Um, in Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 the good news translation it says God is not like people who lie he is not a human who changes his mind whatever he promises he does he speaks and it is done in Proverbs 24 and verse 21 the amplified it says my son fear the Lord and the king and do not associate with those who are given to change it says of allegiance in our revolutionary. And that is a word for today with all the things that we are seeing where um, things that are not based on God's word are being proposed and pushed and um, people are um, moving their allegiance from what they once claimed to what is popular in society. We have to stand on God's word. So um, we have to recognize that people lie and God does not. Um, Romans chapter 3 and verse 4, it says, and this is the Brian Standard Bible, it says, Certainly not. Let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and victorious when you judge. So we have to remember God is always true. It doesn't matter what a situation looks like. His word is what we can stand on. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 4, New Living Translation, it said, If someone claims that I know God but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. And that's very plain, very plainly spoken. Another thing we have to remember and um, look at because it is helpful to um, see an example um, 
even when we're dealing with all the untruths that are um, being perpetrated in society today, we have to remember that the earth tells the truth. God created the earth and the earth tells the truth. Even when people don't want it to, it tells the truth. Psalms 85 and 11, the Amplified, it says, truth springs from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. In Genesis chapter four in verse 10, New Living Translation, it says, but the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Um, there are so many things today in, in um, society and in the world where people are trying to um, change science and, and change the things that have been from the beginning till now to fit the narrative of what it is that they want to take place and um, the earth testifies against that. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter how much we um, try to change things in society. Um, how God created things is how things will be and it's the only way that things will work. So we have to remember that. The truth of God's word is a provision for his kingdom sons. We have to remember to use the word of God as provision. It is there to help us live this life. Um, we can't live life in a positive way based on what's going on in society. It changes every day. Different things that they want you to change the way you think and change the way you operate and God's word is the same. It gives us a basis of truth, and that's what we need to stick to. Second Timothy chapter three and verse 16 in the New Living Translation, it says all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us, um, teaches us to do what is right. In John chapter 17 and verse 17, and this is God's word translation. It says, use the truth to make them holy. Your words are truth. First John chapter two and verse 20 through 21. And this is the Berean standard Bible. It says, you however, have an, an anointing from the Holy One and all of you know the truth. So as sons of God in the kingdom, we have been given God's word so that we know the truth. Um, if you are not getting into God's word right now, I encourage you to do so because it's the only way you're going to know what is true. This is a deceptive time. And if you don't know his word, you don't have anything to, to stand on. You don't have anything to base um, your decision making on. You have to know God's word. Um, let me see. Oh, let me finish this verse. The second part of um, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, this is verse 21. It says, I have not written to you because you lack knowledge of the truth. And because you have it and because no lie comes from the truth. So, if we have God's word, we will not be fooled by the things that are false. We will not be caught up in deception. We will be able to discern what is true and what is not. As kingdom citizens, we must be able to discern the truth from a lie. In um, 1 John chapter 4, verses uh, 3 through 6, this is the New Living Translation. And, um, yeah, first John chapter four, verses three through six, it says, but if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, the person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here, but you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won victory over those people 
because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to the world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint and the world listens to them. I think it's very important that we remember that as kingdom citizens, that the world is not going to be receptive to the things of God in this time that we're living in. So um, we still have to stand and we need to be encouraged to continue to offer that word to people, to offer people the truth and what they do with it is up to them. But it's necessary that we uh, continue to stand boldly in the truth of God's word. It says, but we belong to God and those who know God listen to us. So remember that if they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. Psalms chapter 12 and verse 6 in the net version of the Bible, it says the Lord's words are absolutely reliable. They are as untainted as silver purified in a furnace on the ground where it is thoroughly refined. His word is absolutely reliable. Also, we need to um, recognize that mature kingdom citizens know and recognize the truth. This is another thing um, where a lot of times um, if you see someone who claims to know God, claims to be a kingdom citizen, and they're not walking in truth, it may be because they're immature and it may be because they don't know the word enough to be able to stand on it. So it's very important that we get into the word and that we study and that we um, come to a place of maturity so that we can recognize and know um, truth. Hebrews chapter five and verse 14 in the New Living Translation, it says solid food is for those who are mature who through training have skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. So as we mature, we are able to discern when things come up that um, there may be a question with other people, but with you, you should know what right and wrong is based on God's word and, and what you have learned from that word. In um, the book of John chapter 18 and verse 37, the New Living Translation. It says, Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus responded, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love truth recognize that what I say is true. So like I said, this time that we live in, when people do not want to know the truth, that lets you know where the person's at. Um, and all you can do is offer the truth. That's all you can do. You can't force people to um, believe what you believe. You can't force people to um, stand on God's word, but it is necessary for you to stand on God's word. And um, we need to remember that the truth always reveals who people are and what kingdom they belong to. In the book of John chapter eight, verses 44 through 47 in the Berean Standard Bible. It says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out his desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, refusing to uphold the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language because he is a liar and the father of lies. Because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you can prove me guilty of sin? If I speak the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears the words of God. And the reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. So we, we need to remember that. Matthew chapter seven and verse 20, the New Living Translation, it says, yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. So the, and it's amazing how the word of God spells things out. Even though people don't want to hear that, his word is very plain 
and um, giving us wisdom on how to deal with things. Um, we also have to remember that um, in, in just the period of time that we're in, um, people are so self-focused and um, very much about me type of mentality. And it, it's just the time that we're living in. Timothy described it perfectly. Um, being self-focused can cause you to reject the truth. In the book of Romans, chapter 2 and verse 8, and this is the New International Version, it said, but for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3, in the Amplified, it says, for a time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing, they will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another chosen to satisfy their own desires to support the errors that they hold. And uh, we are definitely living in that time where that is the truth. Um, we must not allow how we feel or our emotions to turn us or blind us from the truth of God's word. I know there are so many things taking place in the world and I think that it's very important for us as kingdom citizens to not get caught up in things emotionally, look at things based on what God's word said. Um, I believe the enemy is trying to use um, people's emotions to cause them to make decisions that are not um, based on God's word and not biblical and not about the kingdom at all. Uh, so we have to be careful not to allow our emotions or how we feel to blind us to the truth of God's word. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 7 in the CEV version of the Bible, it says, you were doing so well until someone made you turn from the truth. It is so important not to get caught up. It's very important not to allow the media to cause you to get caught up in the things taking place in society today. Um, there are a lot of things taking place that are negative, a lot of things that can um, upset you, but you cannot get caught up in that emotionally and allow your feelings to turn you in a way where you start making decisions not based on God's word. Um, Galatians chapter four and verse 16 in the New Living Translation, it says, have I now become your enemy because I am telling you the truth? Um, <laughs> there's a lot I could say there, but I, I won't. Um, it's very difficult to watch people who at one time you had good relationships with um, turn and, and become an enemy because they don't agree with what the Word of God says. Um, people are caught up in things, like I said, emotionally based on things going on in society. And the Word of God um, describes things perfectly as far as what will take place in this time. And I don't know if people actually believed that word, but to see these things manifesting, um, we should be recognizing the times that we're living in and not be deterred from continuing to operate in the kingdom and continuing to do our kingdom assignment and continuing to operate the way God wants us to, not operating based on um, emotion and feeling and, and making um, almost hateful types of decisions. We have to operate based on God's word and not turn away from the truth because it doesn't fit our narrative. In the book of Amos chapter 5 and verse 10, in the English Standard Version of the Bible, it says, they hate him who reproves in the gate and they abhor him who speaks the truth. And we are definitely living in a time 
where that is the case. Um, when truth is spoken, it, it seems that people feel that it's hateful, but it's God's word. God's word will not change um, based on what's taking place in the world today. We have to continue to stand on the truth of his word. Um, so I would like to ask you a few questions and just think about these questions in, in regards to where you're at right now in your life. Is your relationship with God the stabilizing factor in your life? Are you being moved by what's taking place in society? Um, are you um, just, you know, upset daily? You watch the news, you get caught up in what's taking place, or are you allowing God to be that stabilizing factor in your life? Um, another question is, is God's word the final authority in your life? Or are you moved by current doctrine or what society says? Um, we cannot base our lives on what is taking place in society. Like I said, it is changing daily. God's word is stable and reliable and it, it is the truth. It does not change. It is something you can stand on and it is something that um, will hold you up in, in the midst of everything taking place. So we have to make that choice of whether or not God's word is our final authority or will be moved by everything that we hear um, taking place in the world today. And another question, have you given God's word time to expose the lies that you hear? Um, I, I hear about so many people who are always watching the news, they're always on social media, they're always um, listening to things, and I'm wondering when are you spending time in the Word of God to be able to combat what it is that you're hearing out in society or on the news or whatever it is you're listening to that isn't um, uplifting, it is not helping you um, make good decisions. Um, we have to make sure that we are giving God's word time so we're able to expose when lies are placed before us and we're able to discern truth and we are able to discern whether or not um, doctrine is correct. I mean, you have to know the word of God to be able to see when it's false and when it isn't. So. Um, that's another thing. We have to give God time, his word time in our lives so that we're able to expose lies. Um, another question is, are you willing to be corrected and taught by God's word? Um, I hear so many people who claim to be Christian, who claim to say that they believe in God, but they do not believe in standing on what his word says. And, and that's a huge contradiction. It doesn't work. We have to be willing to be led and directed in our lives, our daily lives. His word is for daily life. It's not something you just read on Sunday. It's not something, um, you know, going to church is, is not enough. You have to live by the word every day. And how, another question, how is your ability to discern truth? How are you doing in being able to discern what is true and what is not? Um, once again, it, it takes um, spending time in the Word so that we are familiar with God's Word, with the spirit of His Word. Even if you don't know every verse in the Bible, um, having gone over His Word and read through it, um, you may not know it by heart, but you have um, picked up on the spirit of God's word. If you do not spend time in his word, if you do not allow God to speak to you through the word, um, it makes it difficult to discern when things are being put before you that are not truthful. We need to be able to hear God and to know when um, we need to turn away from something that's a lie. Um, I hope that this has been an encouragement for you.
Um, I hope that you will take it seriously that we need to stand on the truth of God's word and not be moved by what we see today in um, the world and continue to move forward with his kingdom agenda and um, share the truth of God's word with other people. If people are willing to receive it, then that's a wonderful thing. Um, it'll change their lives. If they don't receive it, you will have done what you were responsible for doing. And that is to stand on his word and to share it with others. So thank you so much for this opportunity. God bless you.